Hi, I'm Sri Sundaram. I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist with South Denver Cardiology. Cardiac electrophysiologist is a subspecialist in, within cardiology. There are general cardiologists who handle all aspects of cardiology. There's interventional cardiologists. Those guys are essentially the plumbers. They deal with the blockages in blood vessels, heart attacks. That's their specialty. Cardiac electrophysiologist is uh, a doctor that specializes in the abnormal electrical circuitry of the heart. Atrial fibrillation is one of the rhythms that is an abnormal electrical circuitry in the heart. Atrial fibrillation is the most common abnormal electrical rhythm in the heart. As much as one out of four people in the United States at one point their lives will develop it. It actually comes from the top left chamber in the heart, the left atrium, and it comes particularly from these guys called the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins transport uh, oxygenated blood from your lungs back to your heart. And it's in that border zone between the pulmonary veins and the left atrium where AFib comes from. So the cause of atrial fibrillation is currently uh, unknown. Um, I tell my patients all the time, I could get a Nobel Prize if I could tell you what causes it because no one really understands it. We do know again that it is the most common abnormal rhythm with as much as one out of four people in the United States getting it. Uh, I've seen patients from as young as age 18 all the way until age 90 develop atrial fibrillation. The average person is somewhere usually in their 50s or 60s before they develop atrial fibrillation, but it can occur much older or much younger. So the treatment for atrial fibrillation primarily depends upon the patient's symptoms and their heart status, meaning is there any damage to the heart or not. Treatments can range from doing nothing, if the patient is basically asymptomatic and there's no damage to the heart, to all the way to something called catheter-based ablation or even a surgical maze. So we base our treatment into multiple categories. One is nothing. Two is something called rate control, in which we give you simple drugs to try to keep your heart rate from getting too fast or too slow. These are some of the most commonly prescribed drugs out there, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. If that doesn't work, there's a second category of drugs called antiarrhythmic med medications. These drugs work anywhere from 30 to 60% of the time at preventing atrial fibrillation. So the next treatment option for atrial fibrillation is a rhythm control approach, and that's which uh, we try to actually treat the symptoms and control atrial fibrillation. The first option underneath that is antiarrhythmic drugs. These are drugs that work anywhere from about 30 to 60% of the time, and what they're actually trying to do is actually keep you out of atrial fibrillation. We know, however, that over time they have decreasing efficacy, meaning that over a number of years, they tend to work less and less often and less effective. So we initially start the treatment of atrial fibrillation with medications. If that doesn't work, that's when it's time to move on to catheter-based ablation. What that is is where we put wires that go from the groin area up to the heart, and then we can either freeze or burn the area around the pulmonary veins where atrial fibrillation comes from. These are both currently FDA-approved technologies, and we do both of them at South Denver Cardiology. Uh, the one unique aspect of uh, South Denver cardiology is that we are one of the few areas, uh, few groups in the country that do this without the use of radiation. With the advancement in technology that has occurred recently, uh, we're now able to do a lot of these procedures without the use of radiation or fluoroscopy or x-ray as it's called. Uh, what that's really done is made it that we, it's much safer for patients. We decrease the lifetime exposure of radiation. You decrease your overall risks of cancer and other malignancies or any other uh, problems occurring down the road by not having any radiation during the case. So the procedure for catheter-based ablation is about 70 to 80 percent successful. What that means is about 20 to 30 percent of the time it does not work. The next option we usually do is trying to go back in again with a second catheter-based ablation. If that doesn't work then the option is a surgical maze procedure. Now what that is, is uh, the uh, open heart version of what we do with a catheter. So instead of going on the inside of the heart, the surgeon goes on the outside. We do this in conjunction with one of our surgical partners. The procedure used to be cutting your chest open, basically a full sternum where you break the chest completely. Uh, now what it is, is it's three ports that go in between the ribs. So patients are in the hospital for three days on average and back at work within 10 days. That sure beats the 10 days to two weeks in the hospital and out of work for six months. So we're getting results that are just as good, however we're doing them with a much, much quicker recovery time. So atrial fibrillation is the number one cause of stroke in the United States. 91% of all clots in the left atrium come from this guy called the left atrial appendage. That's just an extra structure in your heart. Patients take blood thinners such as warfarin or coumadin or one of the newer blood thinners 
that affects their whole body, but the whole intent is we just want to thin the blood in that little area. So an alternative was recently developed and is FDA approved, and we're one of 100 doctors in the country that are available to do this. It's called a Watchman device. And the procedure takes us about a little less than an hour to do. Uh, we do it in the hospital, and what we do is essentially put a plug on the inside of this left atrial appendage. After 45 days, if everything goes right, your heart will essentially grow skin over it, and then you no longer need a blood thinner. So you no longer need to take any blood thinners anymore for atrial fibrillation. So I am one of four cardiac electrophysiologists with South Denver Cardiology. We have a whole team of doctors that are dedicated to the treatment of atrial fibrillation. Treatment of atrial fibrillation can be uh, frustrating for patients because it takes a while, but eventually we will get to the point which we are able to uh, treat your atrial fibrillation and make you feel better.